Namaskar. Humankind's earliest narratives for giving meaning to the world offered transcendental accounts centered on a supernatural force or deity. Over the past few centuries, the success of science superseded these supernatural and spiritual elements. The new metaphysics in the West became humanism, a worldview in which there is no transcendental intelligence and humans are considered to be the center of existence and meaning. These words by Rajiv Ji in his book, Artificial Intelligence and the Future of Power, highlights the human tendency to seek to know if there is an underlying order, a meaning to our lives and the universe around. Why are things the way they are? How did everything come to be? These are natural questions that each of us has faced at some point or the other. Even though we may be a blip in the vast expanse of reality, we believe that the power of our thinking can help us know the deep truths of the universe. When humanism took center stage in the West, this idea was stretched to make everything rather anthropocentric. For instance, Geoffrey Chaucer's poetry has various elements of anthropocentrism. With the turn of the millennium, we may have seen a spring burst of novel thought, a further revolution, so to say. We may have stepped into what can be called the age of transhumanism. Transhumanism is the belief that humans can evolve beyond their current physical and mental limitations with the help of science. Technology has already made humans extraordinarily empowered. Today, we can communicate or travel between the ends of the world at ease. We can see images of distant galaxies and stars as easily as we can see corners of the bed we sleep in. We have eradicated diseases that have plagued mankind for eons. We are no longer limited by our physicality and mental capacity in many ways. Simon Young had once said, man is not born free, but everywhere in biological chains. People of the world, arise and break yourself free from these biological chains. We may be on that path of biological emancipation already, but till what point here can we stretch this idea? How far can we go with our technological attainments in this area? Transhumanism pitches a rather optimistic note on this front. Given that death is the final limitation of human existence, many transhumanists even seek to conquer death with technology. With popular shows like Upload, we seem to be quite intrigued by the possibility of outsmarting death with ingenious propositions like uploading one's consciousness onto silicon or to a cloud platform guaranteeing a kind of immortality. One of the most prominent initiatives towards transhumanism in modern times is Neuralink, co-founded by Elon Musk. Neuralink is a neurotechnology company that develops implantable brain-machine interfaces. In the recent years, it aimed at making devices that could treat serious brain diseases in the short term. In 2021, monkeys were shown to be playing the game of ping pong when they had Neuralink implanted onto them. Neuralink uses an application-specific integrated circuit or ASIC that can convert information obtained from neurons into an understandable binary code, primarily using analog to digital converters, analog pixels, and a control circuit. Neuralink has provided no evidence that it can or has even attempted to treat depression, insomnia, or a dozen other diseases that Elon Musk mentioned it will try to. One technical difficulty is perfecting microwires that can survive the corrosive environment inside a living human brain for a long period of time. Musk's words on how we coexist with advanced AI, achieving some AI symbiosis, are vague at best. Even as it builds momentum, there are glaring questions that are still needed to be addressed. Earlier this year, for instance, nine violations of the Federal Animal Welfare Act that ensures the well-being of animals in animal experiments were reported. Science-wise, the proposed gadget will be based on photonic technology and be placed outside the skull. The idea is to beam photons through the skull and watch what bounces back, as it is possible to observe neural activity by measuring how cells reflect light. Having said that, this kind of brain readings using non-invasive methods are nowhere comparable to the performance of implanted sensors. Therefore, when it comes to performance, there are serious questions about Neuralink's efficacy at a purely functional and physiological level. While humanism used the rationale of science to move away from the idea of superhuman, transhumanism seems to have found in science's power a call back to the superhuman, although far from being empirically conclusive yet. This thought has been elucidated by Rajivji in his book, 
artificial intelligence and the future of power when he says this view takes to task the best selling author noah harari who posits the opposite metaphysics according to harari the self and its freedom is merely an illusion and a myth hay rationalizes that the superhuman of the future is not only inevitable but justified by science he views it as a path to artificial immortality artificial happiness and even artificial divinity because he rejects the existence of a human self any discussion about human rights is dismissed as a sham this view is shared by those espousing scientific realism in many places so besides and beyond the technical and financial issues that need to be addressed for neuralink what has become even more pertinent to address is a rather ethical question where do we draw the line let us expand on this with an associated domain of neurological interventions in today's world neuropolitics neuropolitics looks at the interplay between the brain and politics can the way our brain and its wiring be responsible for our political ideology for instance do certain areas of a brain work more for us to have greater political awareness politicians these days know the importance of molding their politics to suit the thinking the predisposition and the self interest of maximum number of voters who vote for them in this the leaders look at behavioral aspects as well as cognitive tendencies of their voters when they are planning for campaigning everything from posters to rally speeches um media appearances to social media pitches are deployed with careful planning and analytics for instance it was seen that carefully planned propaganda campaigns through social media data analytics and surveillance tools seems to have swayed voters in the brexit referendum in the united kingdom effectively might i add all in all it is not just making sense and having the right policies that matters to people when they select their leaders it seems it is also a complex interplay of their own behavioral emotional mental and social aspects that influence these elections recent research has shown that emotions can affect decision making in various ways that do not necessarily undermine rationality but rather moderate how individuals make their decisions increasingly the politicians are becoming experts in being able to wield virtual tools of effective engagement after all when it comes to people nowadays some words by rajiv ji from his book come to mind they constantly depend on online searches and intelligent devices for information memory atrophies attention span shortens at the same time digital users artificially inflate their egos through social media platforms like facebook and twitter with the instant popularity measured by the number of likes or followers sometimes running into millions many have become dependent on social media for their self esteem and psychological well-being this cognitive reengineering is not a passing fad but the likely future being driven by the latest ai technology i use the term moronization to refer to this dumbing down of large portions of humanity like a proverbial double edged sword the boon of technology for politics that should be used for constructive public dialogue and consultative governance has become a tool that is used for hyper partisan media clickbait websites and bot or troll armies online that spread political disinformation for winning elections any which way besides the human element machine learning and other technological innovations have enabled current technologies to be able to gauge our likes and dislikes our tendencies and preferences how we react emotionally to some topics how we think about specific issues and whether we can sway a sizable number of people to a certain cause this goes way beyond any psychological assessment and effectively finds latent factors that politicians may have missed out on otherwise all of this also helps the political leaders to customize content using what can be called the cumulative digital footprint of their electorate even as fundamental questions still remain and surround the concept of consent and trust while this effective deployment of machine learning and data analytics is changing the rules of the game we are now looking at the possibility of going even further with neuropolitics and neuromarketing we have now started looking at how the activity in different parts of the brain can play a role in forming political loyalties and alignments for instance a recent study showed that conservatism is generated in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex individualism in the medial prefrontal cortex and the temporoparietal junction and radicalism in the posterior cingulate and ventral striatum technologies such as biofeedback brain imaging and facial coding are also being used by politicians and political parties such as by the institutional revolutionary party of mexico which used facial coding to help pick its best candidates justice and development party in turkey 
tracks the activity on faces and of eyes, brain waves, skin, as well as heart rates of volunteers to see how effective and emotionally engaging their campaigns were. Neuropolitical campaigning does what surveillance and even technological pattern recognition using digital footprint cannot do. Machine learning political preferences will be unsuccessful if a voter cannot or does not significantly engage in political activities online. However, when it comes to neuropolitics, with biological trackers such as brain waves, facial expressions and skin conductance, we can get to know about a voter's opinions and feelings without them having to even articulate it. But there are important questions that still need to be addressed. What about a voter's freedom of expression and representation? What about the individual's boundaries, independence and neuro rights of the individual? If one can engineer or influence the choice of a person when it comes to his or her vote, then what democracy are we talking of? Where is the sovereignty of the individual over his or her will and agency? This is the problem of neuropolitics as it happens to be of Neuralink as well. This anxiety must, however, be tempered with realism and not be elevated to paranoia. Today, while neuroscientists have made progress in understanding how the brain looks at various processes, such as controlling movement, for instance, in the human body, there are still questions around how it processes thoughts and creates memories. Regardless, we must guard against the misuse of such technology. While Neuralink claims to be helpful for treating ailments, the ethical guarantees are far and few. Worse still is the reality that a much larger market exists for Neuralink if it seeks to use the acquired brain data for other pursuits which can be potentially harmful. When a new technology has the potential to disrupt social norms, change collective behavior, or undermine established values, there are broader ethical questions around where the boundaries between what can be and what should be. Even at an individual level, concerns around potential psychological and behavioral impacts have not been addressed. For instance, one could ask whether use of such devices could lead to personality changes or addiction or even chronic psychological disorders. However, the final frontier of issues lies in the social realm. If we do have a neural link implant, who owns the implant and has access to the data and functionalities? As it stands, even for cardiac devices such as implantable cardio verter defibrillators or the ICD, the data is channeled to data warehouses and not the patients themselves. If a similar reality is seen with neural link, that would effectively mean that market forces could use this data obtained from devices to engineer and possibly manipulate individual and collective thought as and when the technology reaches there. What if you forget updating the software? Will the brain go into a sleep mode? What if hackers get access to your brain? These are all fascinating and yet highly problematic questions in themselves that need to be addressed when we talk about neural link and such brain machine interfaces. To stretch the possibilities even further, could we also end up creating a society where the privileged can customize and engineer their capabilities to get better jobs and have a higher quality of life, for instance, over and above the underprivileged who may be unable to do this, thereby entrenching the classist tendencies in society. So what can we do to ensure that brain machine interfaces do not fall into the wrong hands or are not misused? We need to ensure that these are not detrimental to human society at large. How can products like Neuralink be an asset rather than a capitalist tool of extended surveillance, data gathering for profit mechanism that commodifies humanity as a whole? Can we really preserve democracy and individual rights when we become hyper-dependent on a private platform which may imminently wash its hands off from taking any responsibility or being accountable to anyone. Before Neuralink, there have been many implanted electronic devices that have helped health-wise. Some have been driven into the motor cortex, for instance, to allow paralyzed people to move a robotic arm with significant dexterity, while in another instance, neural dust that comprises thousands of tiny silicon motes have been injected into the brain that can record and transmit information using acoustic vibrations then why can't Neuralink go down such a beatific path? Among the problems faced by Neuralink, the preeminent one is of privacy. I believe that a good solution would be to give individuals the choice of opting in, as organ donors do, to share their brain data from their devices or not. In fact, opting out of sharing any information should be the default choice. Any sale or commercial use of this data received thereof must be regulated. Moreover, we must establish an international convention to decide on what actions cannot and should not be undertaken in a social context to protect the identity, the rights of people and autonomy. John Dewey had once said, education is life itself. 
we must educate people and inform them on how brain implants can affect personality, mood and sense of self in an individual. To avoid the entrenchment of the classist tendencies that I had mentioned a while back, we must have community specific commissions to establish specific rules and regulations for the usage of these brain machine interfaces. Since such technology can be misused as a weapon of destruction, potentially, there has to be an instrument of regulation like the Geneva Protocol is for biological and chemical weapons. Processing of data must be decentralized using ideas such as differential privacy or federated learning. The use of other specific technologies designed to protect people's data could help as well. Techniques based on blockchain allows the data to be tracked as well as audited. A customer can establish a smart contract that can give transparent control over how the data is used without any centralized authority. In the spirit of transparency, we must promote open data as well as various formalisms around it. Let us not harbor any apprehensions around this emergent technology. Let us embrace its potential with the right kind of regulation and honesty. That is my hope, as it is for a million other instances where science is an enabler and an empowerer for that matter. The nature of usage is determined by the user and subject to their intentions. When Einstein had said, it has become appallingly obvious that our technology has exceeded our humanity, he may not have been completely off the mark given the misuse of technology in many places over the past few centuries. May science be like the fragrance of frankincense, sweet and rejuvenating, not quite a Frankensteinian misadventure. And the same is the hope from my side for brain machine implants such as Neuralink, as well as various other paradigms such as neuropolitics and neuromarketing that may come to the fore in the years ahead. Thank you. Namaskar.